Productivity is Italy's biggest problem and will be the next government's biggest challenge. Industrial production is down and labour productivity is not competitive, which means manufacturing jobs are disappearing. So, car giant Fiat has decided to go global, on the one hand by merging with American automaker Chrysler, on the other by investing in innovation, especially in its plants abroad. Melfi, a small town in southern Italy, home to one of Fiat's production plants. The company has recently invested 1 billion euros in the factory to buy machinery needed to produce two new car models. Fiat says it has no intention of closing down factories in Italy. But at the same time, the company recently announced a redundancy fund over two years. The measures effectively mean less work and drastic pay cuts for the plant's 5,500 employees. While there's growing concern among the trade unions that many people could lose their jobs due to outsourcing, these workers are trying to stay positive. Aldo hopes investment of this kind will help his factory keep up in a competitive and innovative environment. We'll make two extra models at the moment, we're just producing one here at Fiat. So we hope there will be enough work for everybody because this region depends on Fiat and its satellite activities. And now that Fiat has decided to merge with Chrysler, we hope we'll benefit from that. So far the Americans have got most of the benefits, but at Melfi we will make new Jeep models. That's positive, isn't it? Fiat's management calls it internationalization, but to some it looks more like outsourcing. What will such a move mean for the company's Italian workers? It would be bad for us if Melfi were to shut down and go to China, but if they decide to make cars both in China and in Melfi, that's great. Asked whether he's concerned about the risk of Fiat leaving Italy, he says... I don't think that will happen. Because they are rooted in Italy, and Fiat is considered as a product made in Italy. Aldo Caparella earns 1,700 euros a month. Some of these workers say that they are ready to accept labour market reforms such as more flexibility in order to keep their jobs. We are prepared to change some of the rules that have been in place for years. If they need us to work on Saturdays, we'll work on Saturdays. We must be competitive in the global market. But unions are skeptical about the job opportunities offered by a global market. The future looks bleak, according to this member of the Metal Workers Federation. The danger is that new production lines will dramatically reduce the car making potential of our 5,500 workers. And even the redundancy fund agreement doesn't make it clear that all the workers will get their jobs back after a 24 month period. Productivity levels in Italy are among the lowest in the OECD. Managers blame union opposition to labour reforms. Unions blame companies' lack of long-term vision. We thought it would be easy for developed countries to go global. Italy was among those countries. We were the sixth or seventh most industrialized country in the world. We thought that emerging countries would just make poor quality goods and wouldn't be able to reach European and Italian technological standards. That was a mistake. It was short-term thinking. Without a comprehensive project on the future of the car industry, emerging economies will be the only beneficiaries of the outsourcing of production lines from Italy. In Serbia, for instance, they are making a model that could have been produced in Italy. We are in the city of Kragujevac in Serbia. Here, Fiat has built a new innovative plant on the site of the Zastava factory, best known for its former Yugo cars. Badly damaged in the 1999 NATO bombing, Zastava was bought up by Fiat in 2008. 
The plant now produces the new Fiat 500 for the global market. Goran Ostajec welcomes the change. When I first started at Zastava, it was very hard working there. It was cold, it was very hard work. When Fiat came, everything changed. The facilities and the workspaces were lighter. It was renovated, warmer. I could go to work knowing that I would be warm and not be cold while I worked. And his son also found a job with Fiat. It's a secure job that allows us to plan for the future. As soon as I graduated from high school, two or three months later, I started working for Fiat and have been there ever since. 1,500 people work at the Kragujevac plant. They earn between 350 and 400 euros per month, slightly above the average Serbian salary. The old Zastava plant employed 25,000 workers but there were no machines and salaries were slightly lower than today. Since the end of the war and the transition from the embargoed socialist system to a market economy, Serbian productivity has grown dramatically. But according to Fiat, there are many more reasons for investing here. In Italy, industrial relations are more developed. When it comes to job contracts and workers' rights here, Serbia is going through a different phase. That doesn't mean that it is easy for a company to set up a factory here and that there are no workers' rights. It's just a different reality, a different context. So it is possible to do things differently. We ask him whether it's easier to work here than in Melfi or Pomigliano. I'm not an expert in Italian labor law. We're dealing with two different contexts. Anyway, our presence here isn't only because of the workforce. There are other reasons to justify our investment here, such as the possibility to reach markets worldwide, the location of the plant, our previous experience collaborating with Serbia, and a package of advantages offered by the government. If Fiat is an example to go by, what Italy needs is a comprehensive set of reforms based on compromise between management and workers and boosted by sound political decisions. The Italian elections may seem far away for the Ostajic family, but their reality is much more closely linked to their Italian colleagues' political choices than they think. That too is the internationalization of a market economy.